And welcome here to the BC uh, as we have a showdown of two Stoddard County teams tonight. Bloomfield uh, against the Dexter Bearcats and we probably can expect more of what we just saw in the JV game. Come down to a two-point ball game. Exciting game to watch. Yeah, Dexter, the Dexter Bearcats JV team come away with a 42-39. Was it 42-39? 42-39. Okay, 42-39 victory and uh, two tightly contested teams here tonight. I'm expecting a close game coming down to the end between these two teams. Uh, Bloomfield had a good showing in their own Christmas yeah. tournament a couple of weeks ago. They don't have much size, but they like to spread you out, and they're doing a lot of penetration, getting trying to get baskets in the lane, if not kicking out, looking for the three-pointers. So they're going to keep you moving defensively, trying to guard the dribble and protecting the three-point shot as well. But Dexter, they're trying to find a niche. They're trying to find a scheme yeah. that works and it uh, keeps them efficient on both sides of the floor, and they're looking forward. This is a big win for them tonight if they can pull this off. They've had a tough go so far this year, but if they get again a win on their home floor here tonight, that's going to bode well for them, not only uh, for their season, but looking forward to the Stoddard County Tournament yeah. here before long. Yeah, exactly. Um, I you know, got the chance to talk to Coach Nichols and Coach Geatley, and you know they had the exact same thoughts that you did, Tyler. This you know, has huge implications for the county seeding. Uh, for the county tournament. So should be a, a great game here at the BEC, and we've got a good good crowd out here tonight. Um, you know, two evenly matched teams, so we'll see what we get. Sure. And Dexter, did they have a game earlier this week? I can't remember. We've Yeah, they played Woodland. Woodland, yes. Woodland earlier in the week. And, uh, you know, come away with a big win there. Uh, that was a homecoming ball game for, for Dexter. Um, not sure who Bloomfield's played Bloomfield just recently. Beat East Prairie early this week. Beat them, I think it was uh, 12 points maybe. 12 points. So they had a win earlier this week against East Prairie. Here we go with the, the starting lineups. can see there on your screen uh, a shot of the Dexter cheerleaders. And, and the Bloomfield Wildcats are coached by Jason Carnes. Starting at guard, number two, Caleb Baker. And a 5'11 senior, Zach Good. 21, Brett Ruck. Number 22, Austin Williamson. And the senior, Thomas Sanders, will round out the starting five. And now for the Dexter Bearcats. Number three, Chase Young. Number four, Nick Noble. Number 11, D.J. Dowdy. Brad Potts. And the senior, number 33, Ryan Joyner. So here we go. Big game for Stoddard County tonight. So I hope it's a fun one. I hope it's nearly as fun as that last JV game. It's worth noting the Stoddard County Conference Tournament in Bloomfield this year, yes. so they're going to have that benefit. It's been alternating between Dexter and Bloomfield every other year. Looks like Brad Potts will be jumping for Dexter along for Austin Williamson for the Bloomfield Wildcats. And Bloomfield will get the first hit. The first possession, I should say. Got the tip and for three early, and it's good. That's Baker with a big three right off the bat.
Up and in and out there by Brad Potts. Just off the rim. Good rebound there by Chase Young. Not the biggest guy on the floor, but he got good position, and that's what you certainly need. If you don't quite have the size, it's all about positioning. Yep. You know, both teams, you mentioned it earlier with Bloomfield, but both teams struggling with size. And a good move there by DJ Dowdy. DJ Dowdy off the glass for two. Got an official timeout here. Ty Shue. Dexter will come out pressing early and that first turnover of the game, but yeah, DJ Dowdy able to pick it up. Back out to Potts. Over to Joyner and inside the good move. Nice move by Chase Young. They're going to set up their offense. Dexter doing a good job of not letting Bloomfield penetrate. Everything's had to been, be from the outside here early. Yeah, Bloomfield likes to penetrate, look for alleys to get into the paint. If not, shoot the three-pointer when it's there. He thought about the deep <laughs> one. Good pulled back, but good move there by Thomas Sanders. Got his own rebound, went back up, and able to draw the foul. The first foul, foul will be against Joyner, the first foul of the ball game. And the steal there by Brad Potts. I need to, well, we get a foul called down low. Looked like Potts might have lost the ball as he was going in the lane, but Sanders called for the blocking foul. Checking in for the wrong against number 32. And Austin the first one's good. And it drains both of them. I apologize, he was one for two on those free throws. Nice move to the basket by Ruck. We get to see the old-fashioned three-point play here, Tyler. Five fifteen to go here in the first quarter. Bloomfield Wildcats lead the Bearcats 6-5. Joiner up and out, almost gets his own rebound. Potts gets the rebound. And Austin Williamson will rebound it. Bloomfield continuing to Look for that shot inside. From the corner, it's just in and out. Looks like that it was Austin Battles on the rebound. Bloomfield staying scrappy around the glass. 
They're going to crash the boards, get second chance opportunities. It's going to be up to Dexter to do the same. You know, both teams can't just rely on the size to, to bring down the board. So both teams going to have to scrap for the offensive rebounds. Yeah, you're exactly right. And that's that's just what Battles did there. Just scrap, got the rebound, and drained both of his free throws. Bloomfield leads 8-5 here early. Dexter not shooting very well early on here. Had a, have had a few shots inside, but should be Gibney's. And a long three. Chase Young gets the steal. And able to draw the foul. And Chase able to drain the first one. Jordan we have Jordan Miller checking into the ball game for the Bearcats. And he hits both of them. Bloomfield not having any trouble with the press from Dexter. They've been able to move the ball up the floor pretty easily. Potts comes down with the rebound. And that was just in and out by Zach Good. And another big rebound there by Williamson. Sanders will bring the ball up the floor, dishes it over to... Uh, 21, Brett Ruck inside uh, Williamson, and he's able to draw the foul. Now we're seeing Bloomfield be able to penetrate that defense a little bit, get into the paint. You know, I've noticed a lot, especially during the Bloomfield Christmas tournament, a lot of teams run, running this dribble drive offense, spreading it out. Yeah. Well, it's, it's it's really designed for teams that don't have a whole lot of size but got some speed, take advantage of your quickness off the dribble. And if you've got the three-point shooters, that's even better because you can drive and kick out to those guys for the open looks. And Bloomfield's been running it quite well so yeah. far this season. It's a, it's a work in progress, too. You just don't flip the switch and start running that to a T. It's certainly a, a work in progress that they've had to implement this year because they're used to some, you know, some kids with some stock, you know, some size to them. Size, but yeah. Chase, Young for two. Chase Young with a nice drive there, but uh, as I mentioned, you know, Bloomfield starting to work that dribble drive quite well. Yeah, they are. They're getting some good looks from, you know, six to eight foot. And the big three there by Sanders, and it's good. There's the three that you were talking about, you know, off the penetration, leaves him wide open at the top of the key. Miller trying to get it inside to Austin Richardson. Caleb Baker will check in for the Bloomfield Wildcats. A little bit of trickery there by Pot. Brad Pot for two. Austin Richardson losing his footing there. And the three, it's off the front of the rim. Bloomfield just out battling Dexter right now inside. Nice strong move by Sanders. And Bloomfield will take a timeout, and so will we. Dexter Family Eye Care, your local vision source provider. We're at an all new location at 812 One Mile Road in Dr. Coburn's previous office. We offer the latest in technology with undilated retinal exams 
and provide consultation for both cataract and LASIK procedures. We have your next pair of sunglasses with quality brands such as Costa, Ray-Ban, and Maui Gym. Our display room has a variety of adult and children's frames. Buy one complete set of glasses and get the second set of lenses free when you purchase the second frame. Stop by our new location at Dexter Family Eye Care. Like that. And we're back here at the BEC as first quarter been an offensive battle as Bloomfield leads the Dexter Bearcats 14 to 11. And that's a nice rebound by Austin Williamson. You know, I'd have to, I know it's early, but early on I'd have to give the battle of the boards to the Bloomfield Wildcats. Yeah, they're, they're crashing the boards the best. Dexter, they really need to stay aggressive offensively. You know, they haven't shot the ball well from the outside, but you can't give up on yeah. the shot. You just can't concede one shot and look to get on defense. You need to crash the boards and keep yourself open to second, potentially third chance yeah. opportunities. I mean, that's the one thing you can do if you're not shooting well is crash the boards and try to get another shot. Checking in for Dexter, number four, Nick Noble. Nick Noble checking for the Bearcats. Steal by the Bearcats. And good follow-up by DJ Dowdy on the missed layup by Chase Young. Chase Young, just been a, a fun athlete to watch. Baseball, football, and basketball senior this year. And the basket by Austin Richardson. Austin Richardson. That'd be Austin Williamson, I'm sorry. Brad Potts for next year. Brad Potts will pick up two points for the Bearcats. It's a neck and neck ball game, just like we thought it would be so far, Tyler. Yeah, it sure is. Back out front to Ruck. He'll hand it off to Sanders over to Williamson. Well, that's the end of our first quarter. We'll be right back with more basketball. First State Bank and Trust in Dexter, we strive to be a community bank focused on serving the financial needs of our local businesses, consumers, and farming operations. As a local bank, we understand that our growth depends on the growth of the community, and we'll make every effort to help our clients prosper. We now have an app for mobile banking. You can access your Net Teller account through our mobile app on your iPhone or iPad. Stop by and see us at 710 West Business 60 in Dexter. We look forward to serving you. Member FDIC. If you have the audacity to believe a financial advisor should talk with you, not at you. If you have the nerve to believe meeting eye to eye helps you see eye to eye, if you believe access to your financial advisor should be a right, not a privilege. Join the nearly 7 million investors who think like you do. FaceTime and ThinkTime make a difference. Join us. Join us. Join us. At Edward Jones, it's how we make sense of investing. And we're back here at the BEC to start the second quarter action we have the Bloomfield Wildcats visiting here the the Dexter Bearcats tonight at the BC and right now the Wildcats lead 16 Big rebound there. That's Brett Ruck pulling it down for the Wildcats. You know, it seemed like early on in the first few minutes of the first quarter, Dexter able to penetrate, but Bloomfield really tightened up on their zone. Yeah, they came out in the zone there. They're going to probably force Dexter to shoot that outside shot and make sure that they crash oh, the boards. And we got a timeout, so we'll be right back. Professional service with care and compassion. 
We at Rainey Mathis Funeral Homes strive to provide you a respectable environment and services during the time of your loss. We offer numerous services including pre-planning arrangements, memorial family tributes, and webcasting for those unable to attend a service. We will listen to you and your wishes to help plan a celebration consistent with your expectations. Rainey Mathis Funeral Homes in Dexter and Bernie. Welcome back, Bloomfield off the timeout. Coach wanting the chance, well, and there's the turnover. I'm sure he, that's not what he drew up during no. the timeout. <laughs> and nice penetration there by Dowdy, misses the shot. And another rebound by Sanders. So I'm telling you, I mean, right now, Bloomfield's just out scrapping the Dexter Bearcats on rebounds. You know, both teams similar on size. Potts gets him one there, throws it up the floor to Miller, and he scores. Nice finish in the open court by Miller. That's what Dexter's need to do is get some easy baskets. They got a good... Defensive rebound, get it out in the open court. Haven't nice been able to get really good looks here yeah. early on, but that was a nice finish. was a good finish. I mean, for those of you that uh, have played basketball out there, you can appreciate trying to pick that ball up that quick on a fast break, lay it in with the defense on you. So good job by Miller to contain himself and focus on making the layup. And he'll get a chance for the three-point play here. And it's off the back of the rim. Williamson pull down, pulling down the rebound for the Wildcats. Great hustle there by number four, Nick Noble for the Bearcats. I always like to see a guy get on the floor a little bit. Yeah, you want to stay aggressive, especially when the ball's loose. I know coaches all love it, you know, when that ball's loose, get on the floor and gain that possession. You know, we always want to keep that aggressiveness at the, you know, utmost certainty, that's for sure. Yep. Never liked the drills, though, when they roll that ball down the court. Never did like that. Oh, yeah, you were going to come <laughs> home with a few strawberries. Bloomfield being really patient here to look for the shot they want. Looks like it was blocked away. Yeah, I think that ball was tipped a little. DJ Dowdy will check back into the ball game for the Bearcats. Sanders, he does a really good job of running this offense for Bloomfield. And good, just good hustle there by Ruck and Chase Young. The official's going to say he stepped on the line, so it'll be Dexter Ball. I didn't hear the initial whistle. Yeah, I didn't so either. Wasn't sure what that whistle was for when it was blown, but if he stepped out of bounds, they called it turnover to the Bearcats. And I think that's what he was explaining to the Bloomfield sideline. Is three nice three by Chase Young. That'll make nine points early on for Chase. Miller getting aggressive on the wing defensively. So far the second quarter offensively has went to the Bearcats as they lead 20 to 16. The steal by the sophomore Austin Aldridge. 
Athens unable to keep control of it. Coach Nichols not particularly happy about the call, but there's about three or four players there vying for possession. And that's a tough call for an official when you've got that, you know, three guys all their momentum going the same yeah. direction, so you can't, you yeah. know, usually the, some of those calls when players go in opposite directions, you can kind of tell easily, easier, but uh, three players going the same direction, it's certainly hard. Man, that's a deep three. Uh, Williamson gonna be called for the foul there, and he knew it as soon as it happened. Uh, Good hustle on his part, but just got over the back. Zach Good will check back in for the Bloomfield Wildcats. So DJ Dowdy will bring it up the floor slowly as Dexter sets up their offense. Austin Aldridge, one of the young players playing for the Bearcats, a sophomore. Get it over to Miller. They're looking to get it inside the pots, but Bloomfield packing the packing it in really well in the paint. Austin Aldridge looking for the short jumper, but contested by Bloomfield. Nice basket by Zach Good. Bloomfield not shooting the ball bad from the outside. They certainly want to keep up that efficiency from the outside. That just opens up the paint even more for their dribble drive offense. And Williamson with the steal, or Sanders, excuse me. Yeah, you're right. Uh, you know, Bloomfield already with three trays on the Next night as we got 3-11 to go here in the second quarter. First personal team foul number five, check it in for Dexter number five. Austin Richardson. And Austin Richardson will check in for the Bearcats. So far, a low scoring second quarter, only a combined eight points between both teams. Now, I'm sure both coaches at the end of the first quarter really preach to their team, you know, not to rush it, you know, get the shot you want. And there's a turnover by the Wildcats. Nice lay in by DJ Dowdy. Good, drains another one. Two back-to-back -back threes by Good. Brad Potts. Nice turnaround jumper by Brad Potts. Dexter moving the ball a lot better here in this second quarter. They, they're not settling for that shot, the easy shot that comes across there from three, but they're working around, getting good looks there in the paint, as you saw there with Potts. Yeah, you are right, Tyler. They, and Dowdy with the trade. Well, this one, I get to complaining about a low score, scoring second quarter. I think they put up about eight or ten points in a matter of a minute. So we got about a minute 30 to go here in the first half. Dexter Bearcats lead 27-22. That good for the another three. So that's nine consecutive points for Zach Good and the Bloomfield Wildcat Wildcats. Check in for Dexter number 33, Ryan Joyner for Bloomfield number 32, Austin Battles. Ryan Joyner will check in for the Bearcats as Austin Battles checks in for the Bloomfield Wildcats.
Back out to Dowdy and uh, over to Young. Richland trying to look inside Ooh. to see if he's seen anything with Joyner and turns the ball over. I'd like to remind all of you out there that you can tweet at SEMO Sports Zone or you can see at the bottom of your screen there, shoot us an email at sports at semosportszone.com. We'd love to hear how you think we're doing, or if you want to give a shout out to a particular player or team, let us know and we'll get you on the air. You know, doing these games, it always amazes me, Tyler. I've, we've heard from, I think, Alaska, North Carolina, you know, all across the uh, the country pretty much. I mean, people are able to, you know, get in on the live stream, and that's just amazing. You can watch a high school ball basketball game in Dexter, Missouri. Um, makes it really convenient for distant family. Number 22, Austin Williamson laying that ball in. I think that was Battles. Oh, was that, that Battles? Was that, yeah. Okay. That's right, Battles 32. Under 20 seconds this first half. We have a tie ball game, 27-27. Dexter's going to hold on for the last shot here as it clicks below 10. And we'll go in at the half, tie ball game, 27-27, and we'll be back here in just a bit.
Dexter Hicken Katz. Call Auto Bell Hearing Center at 1-800-499-8786 or visit one of our locations in Dexter and Poplar Bluff, Missouri today. Let's talk about next year. This is the time of year to reflect on last season's crop and make decisions for next season. What mix of crops should you plant? Should you buy new equipment this year or get by another year with what you have? We'd like to help you make the financial side of your planning a little easier. Our Ag Department knows agriculture, and they're local. Stop by and see us at First Midwest Bank. At Glenn St. and Kennett, we have all the GM lines at one location, Chevrolet, Buick, GMC, and Cadillac. I'm Danny Ford, owner of Glenn St. We're always looking for new customers and friends. Come see us at our beautiful dealership in Kennett. We have a great group of people to work with for your very best deal and to save you money. It does not stop there. We also have great service people that you will enjoy. When you leave, we want you to say, I like Glenn Sane. Glenn Sane, and God bless our crew. Okay, you're hooked up and ready to go. New Wave knows you're excited about sports, so now's a great time to get connected with the Triple Play Package. Crystal clear TV, high speed internet, and telephone for only $99.99 a month for 12 months. With New Wave Communications, you've got game. Southeast Missouri Mutual Insurance is celebrating our 100th year. We started protecting rural farmers way back in 1910, insuring folks no one else would. Southeast Missouri Mutual Insurance has been a family business for four generations, and we continue that tradition today, providing solid home, farm, and commercial insurance at very competitive rates. When the ice storm hit us, we were out there with you. All of our claims were processed within days, and we will continue to provide the best coverage and the best service for the next hundred years. Southeast Missouri Mutual Insurance, a century of service. And we're back here at halftime between Bloomfield and Dexter. We've got a tie score 27 here uh, for tonight's game and you know, it was a really contested first half. A lot of three-point shots going up. Bloomfield able to hit a few, but Dexter's been able to work the ball well, get into the paint, and score some underneath. So uh, both teams kind of doing both things well. Yeah, you're exactly right, Tyler. I mean, you know, it's a game just like we thought it would be. Back and forth, close, close, 27-27 here at the half. You know, Dexter's probably, you know, led the turnover margin tonight but Bloomfield's been able to lead on probably rebounding and you know from beyond the arc so you know right there in the second quarter Zach Good hit three consecutive threes for the Bloomfield Wildcats and you know he scored nine of the 11 points scored in the second quarter for the Wildcats so you know, I expect more of the same here in the second half I don't really think much is going to change and it may may just come down to who's holding the ball last it looks like it both teams you know, getting some good looks better there at the latter part of the second quarter. And Bloomfield, they're going to still look for that three-pointer. So if they continue to knock that down, that could be the deciding factor. But, you know, as sure as you go and shoot those threes yeah. on a at a high rate, they tend to not go in as much as you would like. So we'll see how Bloomfield uh, approaches the second yeah. half offensively and how Dexter reacts and see what Dexter does. See if they, you know, try to stay aggressive towards the paint, get some good looks, and... We'll see how it all plays out. Should be a great second half lined up coming up. Yes, it should. And, uh, you know, just go over a couple of stats here if I have a chance, Tyler. Look like Chase Young has nine, point, nine points for the Bearcats. 
DJ Dowdy not too far behind with nine or oh, he's nine points as well. And then Brad Potts with uh, eight points on the night, rounded off by Jordan Miller with two. And for the Bloomfield Wildcats, Caleb Baker with three. You know, mentioned Zach Good, nine points. All of those on the three threes in the second quarter. Austin Williamson with six points. Thomas Sanders with five, and then Austin Bottle, uh, Austin Battles, excuse me, with four points for the Wildcats. So it'll bloom, be Bloomfield ball as we start the second half. And during that halftime, got a message from a few fans. Bill Aslan at home watching from Bloomfield says you're doing a good job, Tyler. He's glad you got. Yeah. I've got you here beside me. I was hoping me. he would say that. <laughs> <laughs> also got a text from Laura and Jonathan Simmons saying that they were enjoying the game from home. So we we appreciate those those texts, tweets. We got I know Tyler's got a few tweets. We'll get to you here in a minute. <laughs> Brett Ruckel, give us the first two points of the second half for the Wildcats. Bloomfield coming out with a little different look defensively and the steal by the Bearcats Joiner took the shot from the wing but unable to get it to fall and ball be knocked out by the Wildcats so it'll be Dexter Bearcat ball underneath their basket. A nice feed inside to Brad Potts. And the Bearcats coming out with a, a little different look with their full court defense. And they get the turn over there as Chase Young drives it up the floor off to Dowdy. And he lays it in. It's a nice assist there by the senior Chase Young. And another three by Good. It was just in and out. The rebound there by Tyler Joyner. And Chase Young says, let me have some of that. As he lays it in. And we'll have a timeout. We'll be right back. Dexter Family Eye Care, your local vision source provider. We're at an all-new location at 812 One Mile Road in Dr. Coburn's previous office. We offer the latest in technology with undilated retinal exams, and provide consultation for both cataract and LASIK procedures. We have your next pair of sunglasses with quality brands such as Costa, Ray-Ban, and Maui Gym. Our display room has a variety of adult and children's frames. Buy one complete set of glasses and get the second set of lenses free when you purchase the second frame. Stop by our new location at Dexter Family Eye Care. And we're back, and we'll take a few tweets here that we've gotten sent in. We've got one from, uh, I believe it's uh, DJ Dowdy's sister from Sarasota, Florida. It says, watch, uh, loves watching her brother online. And appreciate that. She, she uh, keeps in contact quite a bit through the football season and now basketball, so we appreciate her watching down all the way down in Florida. Joiner going to be called for the foul there. And we've got one from Jacob Jackson, a tweet. Says, watching Bloomfield in the Dexter game, let's go Wildcats. We appreciate that, guys. So you can see there at the bottom of your screen, you can tweet at SEMO Sports Zone or shoot us an email at sports at semosportszone.com. We always like to hear from you guys. and. You know, I mentioned it early, but I just think it's really cool that, you know, DJ's sister is able to watch him down in Florida. That's for my Thomas Sanders. Thomas Sanders lays it in for the Bloomfield Wildcats. Taylor Becker for 
And Bloomfield on a nice run here with two consecutive baskets. Oh, a nice pass by Chase Young. And finished by a joiner. That'll be Joyner's first points of the night. As the Bearcats lead 36-33 with 4.30 to go here in the second, third quarter. Zach Good will get the opportunity to shoot free throws after Brad Potts was called there for the foul. You know, both teams have for the most part, managed to do a pretty good job of staying out of foul trouble, Tyler. Yeah. You know, a lot it's being, you know, done from the perimeter. Not a whole lot of post play. So a lot of ball movement, and that's going to keep the defense moving. Some good drains the first one. See if he can knock out the... Back end, he doesn't. In and out, rebounded by Potts as Dowdy brings it up the floor for the Bearcats. Looks like the sophomore Austin Aldridge checked in as Miller goes up strong with the rebound, but un hey, he gets his own rebound. And Austin Aldridge drains Austin it for two Aldridge. points. And Aldridge will come up with a steal. Ball over to Dowdy, back over to Aldridge. Nice penetration by Young. And Ruck will come down for the rebound with for the Bloomfield Wildcats and the three. Potts doing a better job for the Bearcats rebounding here in the second half. Aldridge again for the jump shot, no good. And again, Ruck will come down for the rebound for the Wildcats. So with three minutes to go here in the third quarter, the Bearcats lead 38-34. Good for another three, and it's good. So that'll be his fourth three-pointer of the ball game. Just like that, he has 13 points on the night. Aldridge decides not to go any deeper in the paint. Gives it back to Dowdy to set up the offense. Not sure who will be called for the foul here. Yeah, looks like it'll be Caleb Baker. Looks like Travis Phillips will be checking in for the Bloomfield Wildcats and Chase's younger brother, Chandler Young, will check in for the Dexter Bearcats. Checking in for Dexter, number 32, Chandler Young. Checking in for Bloomfield, number 42, Travis Phillips. So Dexter with a little bit of youth on the floor right now as they have two seniors on the floor, a, a freshman, junior and a sophomore. Thank you. Bluefield staying patient. Dexter doing a nice job rotating. Stay with Bloomfield here. Defense, 
So we have a three-point ball game with a minute 45 to go here in the third quarter. Oh, and Chan, the freshman, getting the block shot underneath. I know Chase, is my, Chase and Chandler's mom and dad get a big kick out of seeing both of them on the floor at the same time, and that is neat for a parent. Well, you only see it once this year. So. Yeah, that's it. That's a nice drive by Sanders, basket and the foul. been impressed with the way Bloomfield's staying patient with that dribble drive offense. That's one offense that, you know, you've really got to be patient a lot of the time because if you know, the dribble, you know, the dribble drive isn't always going to be there. and You have to kick it a lot, and you kind of have that itch to shoot it once yeah. you get that pass. So they're working it quite well tonight. Yeah, they are doing a good job of being patient. And he hits the free throw, so... Just like that, we have another tie ball game, 40 to 40. Right at a minute to go here in the third quarter. And it'll stay Bearcat ball. For those of you out there that may be wondering, the state-ranked Lady Bearcats picked up a win in Kennett last night and also a big win against Webster Groves over the weekend. So yeah, It's been a nice week for the Lady Bearcats. So they've improved to 13-1 and one on the season, so congratulations to those girls and Coach Allen and Coach Sykes. And if you hadn't had a chance to come out and watch them, even if you're, you're not a Dexter Bearcat, it's fun basketball to watch. They move the ball around well, play good defense, play 10 girls, so now Dexter going to possibly hold on to the last shot here. Sure, they're going to try to get that ball into the hands of either Dowdy or Young. And the youth caught up with them a little bit there. The steal by Bloomfield. Five seconds. And able to get the shot off. So that'll be the end of our third quarter. 40 40. We'll be right back. First State Bank and Trust in Dexter, we strive to be a community bank focused on serving the financial needs of our local businesses, consumers, and farming operations. As a local bank, we understand that our growth depends on the growth of the community and we'll make every effort to help our clients prosper. We now have an app for mobile banking. You can access your Net Teller account through our mobile app on your iPhone or iPad. Stop by and see us at 710 West Business 60 in Dexter. We look forward to serving you. Member FDIC. If you have the audacity to believe a financial advisor should talk with you, not at you. If you have the nerve to believe meeting eye to eye helps you see eye to eye. If you believe access to your financial advisor should be a right, not a privilege. Join the nearly 7 million investors who think like you do. FaceTime and ThinkTime make a difference. Join us. Join us. Join us. At Edward Jones, it's how we make sense of investing. We're back to start the fourth quarter and tied at 27 at the half. And here, after we played three quarters, Tyler, we're tied at 40. So, still a tight ball game. And I expect it to come down to the wire. We've been tied at the last two quarter breaks, and I don't expect anything different coming down to the end. It's going to be pretty close. Austin Battles will be whistled for the foul there. Nick Noble will check in for the Bearcats. Looks like the Bearcats possibly got away with the backcourt there, but 
They're going to leave Noble wide open. And it'll be Bloomfield ball. Bloomfield continuing to reverse that ball from wing to wing, looking to get the open shot. And the steal by Potts. Nice assist. Over to Nick Noble, and he's able to get the, the foul and the basket. Looks like Bloomfield may be set up in a little bit of a baseline offense here in the fourth quarter. Maybe hoping to get, open it up a little bit more inside to get a few shots. And the free throw's no good. And those free throws could be a difference maker here as we, we close out the game. Two point ball game, 42-40. Noble in and out, gets his own rebound. No good on the second luck. Rebounded by Chase Young. His shot will be blocked, but it will stay Dexter Bearcat ball underneath their basket. And it's inbounded to Potts. Uh, not the best pass by Noble, but he, he gets away with one there as D.J. Dowdy able to come up with the ball. And there's Bearcats going to get the chance to shoot two. Does the foul be called on Zach Good? Brad Potts. Hits his first free throw. And the second one. That'll be 12 points on the night for Potts. So the Bearcats lead by four. like D.J. Dowdy may be called for the foul on the floor. Now that's actually going to be against Chase Young. Neither team in the bonus right now. Wouldn't going to be called for the walk. Bloomfield able to get the steal off of the press. And Chase Young will be whistled again for the foul on the reach. Next to foul 22, Brad Potts. <laughs> and I'm wrong again, Brad Potts. Ruck mix misses the front end of his two free throws. And he drains the second one. So with 5.30 to go, Bloomfield gets a steal. Oh, nice. Up and in. Nice scoop shot there by Ruck. 
Well, he really had a nice tournament, especially in that, uh, I'm trying to think which game that was. He tied them, or yeah, it was Malden. Yes. At the first yeah. round game, he had that scoop shot to win it for the Wildcats. And he may get that opportunity to hit a winning shot here tonight as we have a one-point ball game. Ah, and he, he's going to get whistled for the walk. Sanders, nice move to the basket, but just took an extra step early. It's over to Miller in the corner, and that ball's tipped, but Dexter's still able to hang on to it. Now Dexter getting a little bit scrappy inside, pulling down three, three rebounds there right in a row. Morningfield really turning up the intensity on the the point guards out front. DJ Dowdy with a deep three. In and out. And Thomas Sanders will come down for the come come down with the rebound. So Bloomfield with a chance to take the lead here. Is that good with the three? Just off the mark. He's had a few that just in and out here yeah. in this second half. And the Bearcats will take a timeout, so we'll be right back. Professional service with care and compassion. We at Rainey Mathis Funeral Homes strive to provide you a respectable environment and services during the time of your loss. We offer numerous services, including pre-planning arrangements, memorial family tributes, and webcasting for those unable to attend a service. We will listen to you and your wishes to help plan a celebration consistent with your expectations. Rainy Mathis Funeral Homes in Dexter and Bernie. Call Audubell Hearing Center at 1-800-499-8786 or visit one of our locations in Dexter and Poplar Bluff, Missouri today. And here we are back at the BEC. Dexter Bearcats lead 44-43 with 3.27 to go here in the ball game. It's been neck and neck all night, Tyler, looking down at the book. You know, it was 16-15 Bloomfield after one quarter. And we've been tied at the end of the second and the third quarter. So it's been anybody's ball game all night. Neither team with a big run. And Bloomfield with a rebound. Ruck pushes it up the floor. They wanted the foul, but... Dexter able to come away with a steal. And the Bearcats will get to shoot too. Bloomfield foul number 22, Austin Williams. Our personal team foul number six at the line shooting two for Dexter. That'll be Austin Williamson's. Whistle for the foul. Jordan Miller puts the front end of the two free throws in. And he hits the second one. The Bearcats with a three-point lead, but 
We've seen the Wildcats able to drain a few threes tonight, so that's going to be on the floor. So both teams will be in the bonus on the next foul, and that could be crucial as we're, we get down to two minutes and 30 seconds to go here in the ball game. Great move by Brett Ruck to the basket. And he nearly gets the steal there, but he's going to be whistled for the foul. Yeah, Dexter's going to step to the line, make some free throws now. DJ Dowdy, two for two so far on the night from the free throw line. Checking in for left field number four, Zach Good. Zach Good will check into the ball game for the Bloomfield Wildcats. And for those of you just tuning in, he has four threes on the night for a total of 13 points. Dowdy makes the first shot of the one and one, so he'll get a chance to give the Bearcats a three point lead. And he does just that. Bearcats go going to continue to pressure. They lead by three. Is that good? You know, he's looking to get the open shot. He Feeling pretty hot from beyond the arch tonight. And the three by Baker. No good. Oh. <laughs> Bearcats unable to capitalize on the fast break. That would have pushed the lead to five, but still a one, one possession game. Bloomfield with a chance to cut it to one or tie. I'm sure Chase Young would like to have that layup back, but we talked about it earlier. When you have defense on your back like, like he did, it's a much tougher shot than it may look like from home. And Baker loses it. Pots will come up with a steal. Coach Nichols is going to force the Bloomfield Wildcats to foul. Bloomfield foul number two, Caleb Baker. Second personal team foul number eight. And the line for extra shooting. So still anybody's ball game. 48-45 with 54.4 seconds to go here in the ball game. Bearcats lead the Bloomfield Wildcats. And Chase Young hits the front end of a one and one and one. A one and one. And one. That got carried away there a little <laughs> bit. Trying to write and talk at the same time. Two for Chase. And I'm not nearly that talented. So Chase Young free hits both of his free throws. So we have a five point ball game and Bloomfield. You know, doesn't need to get in a big hurry here. They've still got plenty of time to get the shot they want, but. Missed shot there by Ruck. I really thought that he needed to be aggressive towards the paint. He's had, he's had good looks here in this fourth quarter with layups, but he just couldn't get that one to fall. And the nice move to the basket, and you're right. You know, I don't think he really had his balance when he went to lay it up. I think that made the difference, so Chase Young will go to the line again, and he's four for four from the line tonight. Make that five for five. And he hits the second one as well, so Chase Young 100% from the line tonight, six for six. Chase gets the rebound on the other end, so he's going to 
get a chance to stay perfect from the line. And it looks like that may have sealed the deal for the Wildcats tonight. But yeah, Bloomfield's had a tough fourth quarter. They only scored five points here in this final frame. They've had a you know tough go here in the fourth quarter, but Dexter being able to you know, hold them off defensively and convert. Yeah, they have. I mean, Dexter, you know, held them off defensively, made the free throws when they needed to make them. So, and Chase, six for eight on the night, misses those two free throws. Yeah, and just like that, Baker hits a three. So the Dexter Bearcats pull away to win 52 to 48 here at the BEC, and we'll be right back with some final stats. And this game brought to you in part by Bank of Advance, where a hang, handshake still matters. The Bank of Advance recognizes that high school athletics and the preparation, a long off season preparing for the hardwood each year. A lot of preparation that goes into these student athletes, and they wish the best of luck to the Dexter Bearcats and all the other remaining teams in Stoddard County. Bank of Advance in Dexter and other locations where a handshake still matters. Let's talk about next year. This is the time of year to reflect on last season's crop and make decisions for next season. What mix of crops should you plant? Should you buy new equipment this year or get by another year with what you have? We'd like to help you make the financial side of your planning a little easier. Our Ag Department knows agriculture, and they're local. Stop by and see us at First Midwest Bank. At Glenn St. and Kennett, we have all the GM lines at one location. Chevrolet, Buick, GMC, and Cadillac. I'm Danny Ford, owner of Glenn St. We're always looking for new customers and friends. Come see us at our beautiful dealership in Kennett. We have a great group of people to work with for your very best deal and to save you money. It does not stop there. We also have great service people that you will enjoy. When you leave, we want you to say, I like Glenn Sane. Glenn Sane, and God bless our troops. Okay, you're hooked up and ready to go. New Wave knows you're excited about sports, so now's a great time to get connected with the Triple Play Package. Crystal clear TV, high speed internet, and telephone for only $99.99 a month for 12 months. With New Wave Communications, you've got game. Southeast Missouri Mutual Insurance is celebrating our 100th year. We started protecting rural farmers way back in 1910, ensuring folks no one else would. Southeast Missouri Mutual Insurance has been a family business for four generations, and we continue that tradition today, providing solid home, farm, and commercial insurance at very competitive rates. When the ice storm hit us, we were out there with you. All of our claims were processed within days, and we will continue to provide the best coverage and the best service for the next hundred years. Southeast Missouri Mutual Insurance, a century of service. And we hear final score from the Bearcat Event Center. The Dexter Bearcats on top of the Bloomfield Wildcats, 52 to 48, coming down to the last few possessions. And Dexter made enough plays there late, hold off the Wildcats. Yeah, they did. You know, it came down to you know, you hate to say a game comes down to the last couple of minutes, but, you know, being tied up, you know, many times throughout the game, it really did come down to the last couple of minutes. And, you know, Dexter was able to make the least mistakes and then was able to make the free throws once they went to the line. So it yep. could have been anybody's ball game, but, you know, Bearcats pull out and win 52-48. It was pretty evenly matched throughout the whole game, but the fourth quarter, uh, Bloomfield really hit a wall offensively. Yeah. They had – five points up until the last shot at the end by Baker to make it eight points for the quarter. So they really struggled offensively in that fourth quarter. They had some open looks from the three, but it 
kind of went cold there in the fourth quarter on the three-point shot and just come up a little bit short. So uh, still a good team in Bloomfield. They're going to look to be competitive in the Stoddard County Conference once again this year. And Dexter helped themselves out yeah. that Bloomfield tournament seeding. Yeah. Uh, they might be able to get up there around the three, four seed if if you're looking at the tournament right yeah. now. But we still got some ball games to play. But uh, certainly did well for themselves when it comes to the Stoddard County. Yeah, you know, and that's you know, speaking of the Stoddard County tournament, that's going to be a a fun one to watch this year. You know, there's you know, could be anybody's tournament. You know, I know Bloomfield, Dexter, Bernie, uh, you know, Advance. You know, all looking to you know jump in there and you know maybe make a difference. You know, just give a few highlights for tonight. You know, for the Dexter Bearcats, Chase Young was 16. Um, follow, uh, actually, DJ Dowdy was 17. Chase Young followed him with 16 points. Brad Potts there with a nine. Um, for the Bloomfield Wildcats, Zach Good with 13 points. And, you know, nine of those come when he got hot there at the end of the second quarter and hit three threes. Brett Ruck with seven points. And then, you know, followed up Thomas Sanders there with 10 points. So, you know, great ball go- game on both sides of the ball. You know, Dowdy, I know, had 17, and Chase Young was 16 points, but not really a superstar on e- either side. Just, you know, evenly matched up team. No big guy. and no. Didn't see much of a post game tonight, yeah, did no, we? None at all. So no. congratulations to the Dexter Bearcats and, uh, you know, the Bloomfield Wildcats. They'll have plenty of chances to maybe get back at the Bearcats this year. Sure. We'll be looking forward to it. Glad you joined us tonight. Appreciate you tuning in for this Stoddard County matchup. We've got some more games coming up. Uh, taking a look here, we've got the girls' game Thursday night, Molden and Kennett. That'll be live Thursday night. Friday, we'll have a good one. Dexter and Bernie down in Bernie. Now the oh, Stoddard yeah. County matchup everyone looks forward to. We'll be looking forward to it as well this Friday night in Bernie. That's always a fun environment, isn't it, Tyler? Oh, it down is. It, it, it'll be a hot box down there in Bernie. <laughs> yeah. it, it sure will. And Saturday, we'll have the Malden JV Tournament Finals Saturday afternoon. Tuesday, next Tuesday, South Pemiscot at Kennett. That'll be live. A nice Boot Hill Conference matchup there. Next next Friday night, Hawkeye at Risco. That'll be live. Tri-County Conference matchup. And a few Mondays from now, we've got Portageville at Gideon, followed up by Risco at Gideon the Tuesday night afterwards. So we've got some games to look forward to upcoming. And hopefully you'll join us. And for myself, Tyler Wagner, Kevin Bishop along with us tonight. Kevin, we appreciate you helping out appreciate tonight. Appreciate Tyler. And we'll look forward to having another one brought to you here on YHC and CMOSportsZone.com. Until then, have a good one.